Hundreds of refugee rights activists stared down police intimidation to protest outside the Kangaroo Point Detention Centre on August 15. The people behind me right now um, have been in detention um, offshore and onshore for over seven years now. They say the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. Well, I'm sick of walking past this fucking prison. I'm sick of it and I will not accept it. We know that detention is a health risk, um, that putting anyone in a cage is inhumane, and uh, we want to fight for their immediate release into the community. The most immediate and achievable demand called for by the protesters is for the refugees inside the prison to be allowed out on day release. Initially, protesters had planned to hold a sit-in on the Story Bridge if this demand was not met, but massive intimidation and threats of violence from police meant this was not possible. The way that the state came down on us this week and um, the threats of police violence, we didn't think we were able to effectively take the bridge, so we made the decision to um, march around the block instead. And there's a football game today! So, I mean, people who hide it behind the whole COVID thing as a reason to not gather in these groups and a reason to not protest, you know, they're not saying the same thing about these football games and these other large gatherings that are happening. They organised a meeting with Border Force to try to delay the protest. Nothing came out of it. It was just a, yeah, as expected, Australian Border Force didn't ex um, make any concessions. Refugees who spoke to the protesters remotely could see clearly what was going on. So that's the government, that's the way the government is working. Try to take in the freedom from people, not just refugees, but everyone, even their own citizens. Today, if you don't stand for refugees, tomorrow you have to stand for yourself. Because those people are protesting, they are the one building this nation and building the future of your children. It's very important to understand that refugees are human like everyone else. They are just coming to this country to live and work and to be safe. They are not different from any, anyone else who comes to this country and lives next door to you. Even though the protesters tried at every stage to avoid conflict with police, the cops were heavy-handed on the day, blocking roads, refused to negotiate with police liaisons and engage in every conceivable petty power play, such as refusing to allow protesters to cross the roads. At least five people were arrested because profits somehow are upheld above actual human rights. You know, when you threaten to close down a bridge, you know, for some relatively short period of time in the grand scheme of things, people start screaming about their freedoms, you know, their freedom to, to move freely throughout the city and to not have their day interrupted. And it's like, you know what? <laughs> Go talk to those guys in that hotel and talk about freedom, and talk about being able to just walk around town. It would be like it's completely feasible and easy for the Australian Border Force, but even the state government to apply pressure and release these men immediately. So I call on Peter Dutton, and I call on Alan Tudge, and I call on the federal Australian government to release these men into the community where they belong. We will not stop fighting until they do. We won't stop until they are free and we're going to do our best to put their voices at the front of this movement.